Hi friends, let's talk about China cabinets. Hi friends, are you like me in that you still have your mother's or your grandmother's or maybe even your own china cabinet and you've heard designers say that they are no longer in style? Well, I'm here today to say decorate the way that you like to decorate. And if you're like me in that regard, I'm keeping my china cabinet. I love it and it's one that I inherited from my mother. It's a Henry Don mahogany and veneer and I think it's gorgeous. I'll insert a clip right here when she saw it in the Henry Don catalog. Henry Don is a furniture manufacturer in Morganton, North Carolina, and this is their 18th century portfolio. In that two-page spread, you see her china cabinet over there on the far left, and on the next page, it shows it in black and white with more of a description at the top, including the fact that it is walnut, not mahogany as I originally thought, and it has some hickory accents. So that catalog is actually from the early 1970s, and as we know, Furniture from that era can look rather dated, but I think she chose something very classic in this china cabinet. And she also saw in that catalog her future server and her dining room table and chairs, and I will feature those in a future video. For right now, this china cabinet needs a good cleaning. The glass definitely needs cleaning, and the furniture needs some polish on it, so I'll get to work on that. And then I'll show you what I'm going to put inside.
So these are the items I'll be putting in my china cabinet. First of all, I'd love to show you my Moss Rose Makasa China that I inherited from my grandmother. It has this deep red, kind of a pinkish red rose on it. And a lot of the pieces of this have gotten broken over the years, actually before I got them. And um, I just display them and use them when I can. Sometimes I have to add other white china just to fill in the gaps. But I do have only four of those really cute teacups, obviously more of the saucers, a few dessert plates. This set right here is actually by Lipper and Man, but it, it coordinates really nicely, even though it's not exactly like the Mikasa. This sugar and creamer here, obviously the sugar bowl does not have the lid that was broken many years ago. So I'm on the lookout for one of those. And I have a few of the, the short soup bowls and one vegetable bowl. I have some candle holders here. Um, the one that has the two holders on one base was inherited from my grandmother. And the single ones were a wedding gift. Here I have a pink sandwich tray. I think that's by Anchor Hawking. I'll look that up. And then I have a Miss America bowl. I think that's what that's called. Also from my grandmother. And it's just gorgeous. I actually do use that. I put potato salad in it, you know, or things like that that are cold. Um, so all of this I, I try to use and not just display. So over here, I have my mother's Princess House Heritage Collection. And a few additions here, as I found them at thrift stores. She did have 12 of these iced tea glasses, which I just love. I love that etching of a heritage pattern. And then I bought this carafe here that also could be used as a base. Now this bell right here, I need to re-glue that clapper, it came loose, but that bell is not Princess House, but I like how it coordinates. My mother only had one pitcher, and then I found one exactly like it at a thrift store, so I just bought another one so I could have um, iced tea and water. At a thrift store, I also got that little jar there with a lid. I have sugar in it, but I've also heard that it's more commonly referred to as a cotton ball jar. For your bathroom and then I have a set of salt and pepper shakers in the heritage pattern so here we have some more glassware and I have a lot of glasses um, too many really but these incredibly tall I'll give you some scale with me holding it these really tall wine glasses were on sale at TJ Maxx and I want to say it was like maybe five dollars <laughs> it was a crazy low price and I thought well there's only four of them but they'd be a nice wedding gift to hold back for someone and then when I got them home and I took them out of the box and looked at at them some more I thought I just love those I'm keeping them for myself and I have actually used those uh, and guests have used them so um, also I'll get to that this little set right here in just a minute these are my um, shorter wine glasses and I only have um, five of those, one broke, and I have matching champagne flutes. Those are from Target many, many years ago. Uh, only five of the champagne flutes. I have some additional champagne flutes here that are more like crystal, and I think I got those maybe at Belk, like 30 years ago, <laughs> maybe. Um, and then over there I have some martini glasses. That was a set of six. And I got those at JCPenney. One was broken, and so that was very discounted. So there are only five, but it was originally a set of six. And then I have these brandy sniffers over here, and they don't match, but I wanted a set of brandy sniffers, and I'll show you what they look like. One's a little bit taller than the other. And I think I, think I like the aesthetics of different alcohol glasses way more than I like the alcohol. <laughs> I really don't drink. My husband doesn't drink either. Occasionally we, we will if we have company over, but it's not part of our daily life. It's, it's just not our world, but I love glasses. And I, I guess I thought when I got these martini glasses, I was imagining some scenario of having friends over and making Cosmos. Or maybe they could also be for daiquiris. 
Um, that really hasn't happened and I've had them for many years, but I will keep them. They're really, really nice and I do like them. And who knows, we might be entertaining and actually need those. Um, over here we have a cut glass bowl with um, the pedestal bowl. That was my grandmother's. Again, I might serve like something cold in there, like banana pudding, um, fruit. It looks great with fruit in it for breakfast. Um, and then some miscellaneous pieces, and I'll point those out. This little perfume bottle. I actually got this in Israel when I was there. And I got several just like it, but I gave them as gifts at my wedding rehearsal dinner to my bridesmaids. This little cup right here from Williamsburg, Virginia. I, that was my mother's and she had it in the china cabinet. And I don't really know the history of that one. This was a wedding gift, this little Macasa wedding bells. I'll put it down so you can see the pattern better. Wedding bells basket. This mug right here that says North Carolina on it with the dogwood, which is our state flower, and the cardinal, which is our state bird, was a gift many years ago. And then we also have this bud vase here. That was my parents. And I love just putting like a single stem in that one. Over here I have this gorgeous bowl has kind of like a, a iridescent periwinkle rim on it. That was mine. I say mine because it was my mother's, but it's what she used to serve me in when I was very, very little. I remember my food being placed in this bowl and it's really shallow and it has nothing on the back to tell you what it is, what, what the manufacturer is, but I just love that. And then I thought this kind of coordinated with it. It's a little vase that was my grandmother's. This was my grandfather's shaving mug that my mother kept, and I just love that. I never knew him. He died when she was 16. Over here we have a beautiful silver tone serving tray. And what's really neat is that that folds into itself so that it is all contained within this holder or this handle here. And that was a gift from my friend Lee and I'm trying to see if there are any other pieces I haven't mentioned oh okay here is the little violet sugar bowl and creamer set really tiny that was my grandmother's paragon on that one this was my grandmother's mug that was a gift to her her, her birthday was uh, in March And I have this bowl here by Andrea by Sadek, I think it says. I'm not familiar with that designer, but I love that. That was my mother's uh, retirement gift from her office. So now let's put all of these beautiful pieces in the china cabinet.
As I was preparing for this video, I did some research on painting china cabinets because even though I'm not planning on doing the one you've just seen, I do have another one that I am considering. I know there is a big trend of painting furniture right now, and if you don't like a piece the way it is, I say why not? So I looked online and I found these examples. This first one is from the website paintedbykaylapayne.com, and I'll have that linked below. She talks about finding this china cabinet on Facebook Marketplace and how it was actually in really good condition. So she knew that there would be some controversy about painting it, but she could not resist because she loves to paint furniture. And here she mixed two different shades of Annie Sloan chalk paint. I love the way the hardware just really pops on those lower drawers, but in the article she says that she tried to polish the hardware and it was not going well so she ultimately painted those drawer pulls with rust-oleum metallic gold finish paint and I think it looks so good like that the next one is from a website entitled a hostinghome.com and this lady got this piece from her grandmother and said it was very high quality solid wood but she just didn't feel like it was her style so she wanted to paint it with chalk paint and she gives a lot of details on how to get that to go on smoothly. She also put wallpaper on the back wall of the cabinet. For the hardware she used a product called Rub and & Buff and it comes in different shades and this one was antique gold. As you can see she is using it here to display a lot of her Ray Dunn pieces. The next two are both from the website Confessions of a Serial DIYer. Here Christy said that she could not resist this one when she saw it at a tag sale even though it was not in the best condition. It actually had some missing veneer on one of the drawers and she ultimately took that veneer off and she gives lots of tips on how to do that. She also gives lots of good tips on paint choices. You can see here that she styled this one for use in the bathroom. And she also did that on the next china cabinet, which she said she found at a thrift store for only $80. This one she had painted white, with the interior being Rust-Oleum's Robin's Egg, and that is so pretty. So check out some of these websites below for more ideas. So I want to leave you with a final tour, and I did do a few tweaks here and there, and you'll see those. I filmed this at night, so hopefully without the reflection coming in from the windows, it's a little bit better view of things in there. I did turn the lights on so you can see how it looks at night. And I want to thank you so much for watching this video, for coming along with me to tour my china cabinet, and just to make you feel some validation about us keeping our china cabinets and loving them. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel. I'll have some more home content coming up, maybe a few shopping videos where I browse some home decor for us, but I love to show things in my home that I'm working on. Everything is a work in progress, just like we are, right? Until we get to heaven. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you in the next video.